Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And this is certainly a topic that is probably more than 80% mm -hmm. agreement. Uh, these systems are critical to uh, the lives of uh, everyday Americans, to all of us. So uh, this topic is, is both extremely timely and extremely important to the people that we work for here in Washington. So I very much appreciate uh, your choice uh, to lead off with this topic and uh, Senator Duckworth's uh, choice to lead off with this topic. This is, uh, this is very much appreciated by my state of Wyoming. Uh, and I too hope the 80-20 rule will continue to apply during the course of the next couple of years. I, I can assure you that that is my goal as well. Um, my first question is for Mr. Oley. Um, I'm interested in how we can make sure that the monies that are coming from the federal government are getting to on the ground assistance, also technical assistance, uh, and not going to academics or regulators. Because regardless of how many regulations we pass or how many studies there are, uh, what really gets clean water to people uh, are uh, the boots on the ground workers that install and maintain systems and understand how to do it. So, Mr. Oley, how can we make sure that the money that Congress is appropriating uh, for these programs is going directly to boots on the ground uh, working on these systems? Thank, thank you very much for the, the question, Senator Lummis, and thank you for your continued support. Uh, I think technical assistance programs are the key to all of these programs, to helping communities, especially the most vulnerable communities, access the funding. And so EPA has existing technical assistance programs, ones like we operate, which fall underneath their national priority areas, but also there's been several new technical assistance programs created. And so ensuring that you're getting qualified uh, nonprofit organizations that are focused on technical assistance that have long-term trusted relationships, that I think is the most critical, especially in small communities, to ensure that you've got folks that have built-in relationships, have the expertise, and then obviously are helping those systems access additional resources across the federal federal government. Mr. McNulty, could you weigh in on this topic as well? Oh, yes, ma'am. I, I, I certainly agree. Uh, I, I believe that the uh, USDA uh, circuit rider program is one of the very best programs in this country. And uh, I, I think you're, you're on the right track here with uh, with getting it out in technical assistance to the communities. Have you seen that circuit rider program uh, work regardless of uh, who's uh, in the White House? Yes, I have. Well, uh, then, it, it, it's there's always a, a big. Pro it's always a favorite program, I think, of Congress. Well, it's certainly um, reassuring to, uh, to hear you say that. Um, the next question I have is for any one of you who cares to answer. Um, do you have any ideas about creative advancements in water management that are happening, whether it's engineering or financing or otherwise, uh, that Congress should know about and either play a role in or intentionally not play a role in? Well, I'll, this is Shelly Chart. I'll jump in um, to say Oklahoma has been very successful and we've created what's called the Oklahoma Strategic Alliance. It is made up of our state uh, funding agency. Uh, it's made up of technical assistance providers and uh, the DEQ drinking water, wastewater staff and capacity development trainers. Um, that's a program that's allowed us to work together and we bring together people from all different backgrounds. They can go out and actually provide some of that uh, boots on the ground, uh, coordination and collaboration uh, between all of the groups. They have somebody they can reach out to if it's something new or unusual we haven't seen before. And then we're able to apply those lessons learned to many other systems. And that's kind of been a uh, lower uh, capital investment that has resulted in significant uh, water system operation improvements. Um, again, this is working primarily with very small and rural systems. Um, so I think that's a great program and it's a great example that we would be happy to share with anyone uh, that wanted to talk with us about that. 
Well, I really appreciate that, Ms. Jard. Thank you for uh, your response, and we'll look into that further. Those kinds of uh, state programs uh, with states being really the um, incubators of innovation with regard to either implementation of these programs uh, or uh, planning ahead for uh, the future is, is deeply appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you.